Hello, and welcome to NASA Langley Research Center's first ever Virtual Art Contest Awards. I'm your host, Kristen D'Amadeo, a space technology communicator at Langley in Hampton, Virginia. Now in its 13th year, Langley's 2020 Art Contest invited K-12 students to use their imaginations to illustrate how NASA is virtually everywhere. We're going to recognize more than 50 stellar winners from across the United States and showcase their phenomenal artistic accomplishments. To kick things off, Center Director Clayton Turner wanted to share his congratulations, as well as a few words about NASA and its people and how their creativity is instrumental to successful missions, whether on Earth, in the air, in space, or virtually. Hello. Welcome and thank you for being part of today's celebration. First, I want to say congratulations, artists. Your creativity and personal vision is inspiring. Looking at your work, I can tell we share a sense of excitement about the future, both here on Earth and in space. There's so much to learn, so much to see, and so much to do. We're ready to begin the journey of a lifetime with you. NASA is reaching for the stars, and I know you are too. I invite you to always hope and dream. If you're going to do something amazing, something everybody said was impossible, you've got to start with imagination. The Wright brothers dreamed of flying long before they made history at Kitty Hawk. People dreamed of exploring the moon centuries before Neil Armstrong took that first step in the summer of 1969. Soon, NASA's Artemis program will send the first woman and the next man to explore the lunar surface and learn how to live and work there. And that's only the beginning. In the not too distant future, astronauts will walk across the dusty surface of Mars. Will you be one of them? NASA is reaching out into our solar system and beyond, uncovering worlds, stars, and cosmic mysteries near and far. What a great time to be you. What a great time to learn about science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Be bold, try something new, even if it's hard, especially if it's hard. That's the spirit of NASA. At NASA Langley, we're always exploring and searching the unknown in new and different ways. We work to make airplanes faster and safer. We're trying out new things that will one day lead to flying cars, imagine that. We study our home planet, Earth. We explore the atmosphere to understand and learn how to preserve our home planet for us and for generations to come. It all starts with dreaming up an idea, just like you did. It requires imagination, just like yours. So again, congratulations and thank you for sharing your ideas and your imagination. Together, we can reach for new heights to reveal the unknown for the benefit of humankind. What a wonderful message from Mr. Turner. Before we recognize our talented students, I think it's important to thank Langley's Art Contest Program Coordinator, Christina Kors, and her team of judges. They had the extremely difficult task of selecting the winners from some really fantastic entries. We should also thank all of the teachers, administrators, parents, and siblings for their support and encouragement of all of these outstanding artists. 2020 was a year like no other, and many students and teachers had to transition to online learning. NASA also had to adapt to this new environment. Langley is contributing to NASA's presence in the virtual space for students and families, as well as continuing innovative research and exploration. This year's contest theme, Virtually Everywhere, asked students to creatively visualize NASA's science, technology, aeronautical, and human exploration activities in the virtual world. This annual contest is open to all children, grades K through 12, attending public, private, parochial, and home schools who are residents of the United States, and children grades K through 12 of U.S. military members stationed overseas. We received 683 pieces of art, all of which are posted on the NASA Langley Student Art Contest Flickr page to share with friends and family. Artwork came in from 38 different states, Washington, D.C., Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Armed Forces in Europe. First, second, and third place winners and honorable mentions in each grade, as well as a grand prize winner, were chosen by a panel of five NASA artists and designers. 
We're going to get to our winners here very shortly, but first we have a special guest message from Mr. Oliver Jeffers. Mr. Jeffers is a visual artist and author whose critically acclaimed picture books have been translated into 45 languages and sold over 12 million copies worldwide. His artwork has been exhibited at such institutions as the Brooklyn Museum in New York, the Irish Museum of Modern Art in Dublin, and the National Portrait Gallery in London. He has been the recipient of numerous awards, including a New York Times Best Illustrated Children's Book Award, an Irish Book Award, and the United Kingdom Literary Association Award. He grew up in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and he currently lives and works in Brooklyn, New York. Mr. Jeffers has a few words for our contest winners. Greetings, fellow artists of Earth. I come to you via the digital wonders of virtual video from my studio in Belfast, Northern Ireland, which is in a different place than you are, unless you're hiding around here somewhere. And one thing that this last year of global pandemic and lockdowns everywhere has shown us is that thanks to our advances in technology, we can still be intimately connected with each other, even though we may be virtually anywhere and virtually everywhere, which of course is the theme of this year's art competition. But first, for those of you who don't know who I am, or recognize this pretty face or these dulcet tones, my name is Oliver Jeffries and I make art and I tell stories. You might know me from some of the picture books I've made over the last two decades, or you might know me from some of my paintings about the night sky or the deep sea, or maybe you know me from being outspoken on social media about climate change and social responsibility, or you might not know me at all, which is fine. Just so long as you regard me as very important with many leather bound books and a home that smells of rich mahogany. I am very grateful and flattered to be asked to speak to all the artists who participated in this year's NASA art competition and to congratulate all the finalists and the winners. Although really, I wanna congratulate every single person for taking part as that is the most important step in being a creative. That brave and bold first step of being willing to share what you've made, knowing full well people may either like it or not. I for one never won any art competitions growing up, although it did not stop me from entering. As my friend, the French artist J.R. once said, being an artist is about being willing to fail publicly. As often the best art happens when you're just simply trying to see what happens if you do something and you're entirely assured, unsure of what the results will be. This too is the way that the best science happens as well. Curiosity before all else. A desire to know more, to understand, to share. My dad always taught me that the surest sign of intelligence in other people was curiosity and imagination. Knowing a lot of facts just simply proves that you've got a good memory. And this is what art and science have in common, I think. Both are trying to understand the world in their own ways. Science is often the how we do something, but art is often the why. So if science is the facts, then art is the stories. And one thing I believe very firmly is that stories are one of the most important creations the human mind has ever conceived. They're the way in which we connect with countless people, regardless of distance or time. They are shared ideas about who we are and where we're going. Think about the last time you read a book by someone written a long time ago, or looked at a painting by someone in a museum who's probably no longer alive on earth. By engaging with these things, you're continuing in a conversation with people that you've never met and you never will meet. As well as virtually everywhere, this is virtually every when. You get a sense of understanding of who these artists were and, and where they were going and how different their worldview may be to how ours is right now. Though the conversation you have with this art, however old it may be, won't be alien to you at all because deep down people always want and really always have wanted the same things. To be understood, to survive, thrive and celebrate beauty in our world. These things never change and that is why you still feel an emotional connection when you look at art made centuries ago. They speak to the human condition. And so too it is with making art. You are initiating a conversation with countless people yet to come. Future generations will look at the art coming out of this generation and the next and possibly understand more about how we felt at this time of great change and turbulence, probably more so than by reading newspaper reports or official documents. The author Kurt Vonnegut spoke about artists being the canary in the coal mine. Coal miners used to bring canaries into the mines as they would sense before anyone else when the oxygen was running out. And the miners would know this because the canaries would stop singing. And that was time to retreat to safety. In this sense, 
It is artists who feel the subtle emotional ripples of the world in patterns they understand before anyone else sees them. This is a great time of disruption and fear. But if we know anything from history, it's that from these trying times come the greatest art and the greatest change. And the greatest change is often in terms of technological advances. We need to make an order for humans not only to survive, but to continue to flourish and to live. The sort of great work that NASA does at multiple levels, for example, but also the sort of work that needs to be done to help translate how people feel about it. And that is the work of artists like you. We artists help remind people what it is that we do any of this for. The economy, the communication industry, the aeronautical navigation industry, even conflict. Winston Churchill was rumoured to have said, when asked halfway through World War II, whether he was going to cut funding for the arts to support the war effort, he asked, then what are we fighting for? Don't let anyone ever tell you that making art is not an important job. As humanity further masters its grasp over technology, as our curiosity grows and our minds wander to the planets and beyond, it gives us a greater sense of our species as a collective whole back here on Earth. And it is this end over the last half decade that I make art these days. Yes, partly to simply relish in the joy of making something beautiful, but also to help show the idea that we are all part of a single community that we only have this one home to live on in all of outer space. And to encourage people to stop thinking about themselves as me, the individual, and start thinking about themselves as part of we humans here on Earth. This time last year, it was frustrating to me that I felt so disconnected that I, I wouldn't be able to do this work as much or connect with as many people because of germs and lockdowns. But humans are adaptable, and I underestimated the speed with which we move around this pandemic, that being nowhere also means that you could be actually everywhere. Every obstacle is an opportunity. And with this opportunity comes the power to share my thoughts and hopes and positivity even more widely. Here for me, science and technology are the how, and art is the why. Jacob Bernowski said once that mankind is remarkable, not because he does science, and not because he does art, but because science and art equally are expressions of our marvelous plasticity of mind. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics emerging in the beautiful cauldron of curious creativity like never before, with steam power that will change the world in as yet unimagined and beautiful ways. And it is so exciting to see how you, the next generation, will do this. Thank you, Mr. Jeffers, for sharing such a wonderful message. Now, our talented winners.
again, congratulations to each extraordinarily talented winner. You're all incredible and your artwork is totally out of this world. Sorry, yeah, dad jokes, couldn't resist. Now I have the great honor and privilege to recognize the grand prize winner. And the grand prize winner has been selected from the amazing 13 first place winners and is from Palos Verdes Estates in California. And please join me in congratulating the 2021 NASA Student Art Contest grand prize winner, second grader, Dagny Tang. Thank you, Mr. Jeffers, Mr. Turner, and of course, all of the students who submitted their art to the contest. Again, a big congratulations to all of our 2021 winners. By looking at the world through your artistic lenses, you can help inspire NASA to develop the cutting edge technology that allows us to explore further than ever before. NASA needs all types of imaginative people. So one day, whether you become an engineer or a scientist, a lawyer or an educator, hopefully some of you will join our NASA team. Until then, stay connected with NASA and keep up your amazing work. Thank you.